Hello guys, um, it's me, Liam. First off, I just want to say I'm very, very sorry for my two week break, but I had some family issues that uh, I had to kind of um, help my, my parents out with. You know, I had to support my mum and everything, so I had to make a choice, and obviously, family always comes first. You know, family always comes first. What I'm trying to do uh, on tonight, firstly, I've got a brand new camera. Um, it was my birthday on the 11th of October. Woohoo! 37 years old. 37. My God, I'm getting old. I'm getting old. But I just thought I'd just do a little um, quick video because once again, once again, our uh, famous paper here. Oh, look, look at the light adjustment going up. Look, look. John this. Oh, look, no. No, I don't have to wonder. Look at this. Look at this. The, 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 the title here. Red Cross calls for end of barracks asylum centre. Yes, Red Cross. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because we want an end to it too. But let me just, let me just um, read out a little bit for you. And let me just make a few comments that I hope um, you guys will find of interest. Okay, so it says, um, it says here, Red Cross joins opposition to Napier Barracks Asylum Centre. Okay. So, use of military site could add to trauma. Okay. Are you not thinking about the trauma that's actually happening in this town by having the barracks there open, open to local residents? That's a bit of a trauma as well, because there are schools around there. There's, you know, primary schools. There's a folks at school for girls, you know. It's a little bit worrying. Anyway, the British Red Cross is calling on the Home Office to stop using Napier Barracks as an asylum processing centre. Thank God. The charity, which rarely criticises government decisions publicly because of its impartial status, spoke to the Express and Herald this week out of its deep concern for those living in the accommodation. Okay. Now, they wanted shelter, and they've got it. Right, three meals a day, warm, Wi-Fi, telephones, access to loads of different support services. Okay, since last month the barracks in Shawncliffe has been housing hundreds of asylum seekers whose claims are delayed because of a processing backlog at the Home Office. Right, a similar model is being operated at the Pinelli Army Base in Wales. Yeah. Okay, now this, this quote from Alex Fraser, the British Red Cross Director of Refugee Support, right, once again, from my last video, they're not refugees, okay? The majority are not refugees, okay? He said, um, by their very nature, military bases are not an appropriate place for people seeking asylum to be sent to. Why? Why? Is it not a roof over their head? What, what, they're getting a little bit miffed off, a little bit miffed off that they're not going into four-star hotels. Sorry. Uh, many will have fled unimaginable horrors, including conflict, persecution, and imprisonment in their home country before seeking sanctuary here in the UK. Right, now I can agree that some, not all, a tiny proportion are actually fleeing war. And maybe putting them in the barracks is not the best place. They're genuine, okay? But they're dead genuine. The majority are. We have visited the site in Penali, da 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 da, to check their health and welfare support. We hope to do the same in Folkestone. We'll continue to liaise with the Home Office to ensure that the risk of further trauma to those staying on these sites is reduced, while urging the government to find alternative, safe, and more humane accommodation options. Oh, diddums. Diddums. Right. Nearly finished. The Red Cross's plea comes as Kent Refugee Action Network plans a Welcome to Folkestone event outside the barracks to ensure the refugees stop saying that word, because they're not, are given a warm welcome. That event will be held this Saturday, October the 17th, that's tomorrow, and organisers say they are not afraid of the far right turning up and disrupting their event. Far right. Far right. 
How is being a patriot being far right? How? How? Please let me know in the comments how somebody that's proud of their country and seeing what is happening to his hometown and being concerned about what's happening, being far right. I'm turning up not to go and do the bloody Hitler salute and, and, and you know, shave my head off for the, for, the, for the shits and giggles with a bloody Nazi swastika and or whatever on my neck. I'm not. Bridget Chapman said, da, 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 da. there's a narrative that suggests local people don't want these refugees staying in the camp. They don't. I'm a local, Bridget. Are you? No. But I don't think that's representative of the local community and support we've been getting for the event. Okay, now, I'm going to finish now, but it is happening tomorrow outside the barracks. It is happening. I think it's about 11 o'clock. Outside Shawncliffe Cemetery, I think this is this is it, it's all up in the air. You know, nobody's been organising it, um, but I will be there. I'll be there, and I think many other uh, YouTubers will. And I urge you, if you can come down, please do. If you if you spot me, you know you know I'm only Tim Pot, and you know, come on, let's all join together here and and make our voices loud and proud, loud and proud, loud and proud. So I'm going to be, it's going to be interesting to see what happens because you know what the what anti-far are like, you know what the far left are like. I've had first experience, we've all had experience of what of the left like. We've also had experience of what the police are like. So hopefully I'll be able to see some of you guys down there tomorrow. And um, hit me up in the comments, what do you think of this camera? Happy birthday to me. <laughs> Sorry, that was so camp. Anyway, love you lots, and I'm going to try and turn it off like this. Bye.